Ministers of India, distinguished delegates, and fellow citizens, a warm greeting to all of you. It's really challenging to be speaking after the lunch, so I'll try to be as quick as possible not to prolong anyone's misery. Ladies and gentlemen, we stand in Bharat with its rich heritage, long revered, with profound interconnectedness with natural resources and our very existence with forces such as sun, wind, water, which have always been a part of our reverence and integral part of our energy and sustenance. Today, it's both an honor and a privilege to carry forward this venerable tradition with the modern nomenclature of renewable energy. As we meet at this beautiful confluence of innovation and tradition, I'm excited to be part of India's steadfast commitment to leading the global renewable energy movement. Reflecting on our journey, esteemed colleagues, I recall Honorable Prime Minister's ambitious vision for energy transition at COP26 in Glasgow. Since then, our commitment has grown stronger. The concept of achieving net zero emissions might seem like a technical one, distant goal, but at its core, it's deeply human. So therefore, I'm here to talk about the humanizing of the net zero. It is about preserving the planet for future generation, ensuring intergenerational equity, ensuring sustainable livelihoods, and fostering development that is both equitable and inclusive. This commitment represents our nation's dedication addressing global climate crisis while simultaneously ensuring economic growth and development. Intergenerational equity is the cornerstone of just and sustainable future, emphasizing India's responsibility to balance the need of today with that of tomorrow. As we steward this planet, we must ensure that the future generation inherit not just our wealth, but also the health of the environment that we all were privileged to enjoy. Distinguished colleagues, with this in mind, India embraced leading role in the climate action. In last one decade, India's solar PV mo module manufacturing capacity has skyrocketed. Just yesterday, we celebrated 10 years of Make in India. Today, we have 2.3 gigawatt, we have come a long way from 2.3 gigawatt to around 67 gigawatt driven by the Make in India initiative. This remarkable growth positions India not only to meet its domestic energy needs, but also to become a key player in the global export. Over the last three years alone, my dear friends, production capacity has surged from 8 gigawatt to massive 67 gigawatts. With, go, uh, with robust government support and the solar P PLI scheme paving the way, India aims to achieve an astounding 100 gigawatt of solar module production capacity by 2026. This ambitious target will not only fulfill our domestic demand, but also enhance foreign exchanges earning through increased export, solidifying India's position as a global leader in solar energy. Now coming to our medium-term target as we set in our NDC, we aim to install 500 gigawatts of non-fossil capacity by 2030 and ensure that half of our power comes from non-fossil fuel sources. We've already exceeded 200 gigawatt of installed non-fossil capacity and surpassed our COP21 Paris summit commitments ahead of the schedule. And this has to be amplified on and on because for a mammoth country like India, it's not an easy task. With robust policies, innovation programs, and substantial investment, India is not just advancing its own energy transition, but it is also setting a global benchmark for climate leadership. Distinguished delegates, it is with great pride that I stand as a part of India's leading role in the global transformation towards clean energy. In the recently concluded RE Invest Summit, organized by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy in Gandhinagar, we celebrated India as the first top uh, G20 nation to meet the Paris goal target of 50% of installed generation, ins installed generation capacity from renewable well ahead of 2030 deadline. Today, 
India ranks fourth globally in renewable energy and continues to inspire the world through initiatives like the Indian Sol International Solar Alliance and the Global Biofuel Alliance, promoting international cooperation in this critical sector. India is richly endowed with renewable energy sources, particularly solar and wind, as all have known, with the potential exceeding 1,100 gigawatt. Since 2020, uh, 2014, we have made remarkable strides expanding this capacity beyond 200. This achievement underscores our supportive policy environment, reg, uh, robust institutional framework, and the momentum that is provided by the leadership of the country itself. A decade ago, renewable energy was considered supplemental source. Today, it is the cornerstone of our energy security and strategy. Our renewable energy sector experience has one of the grow, uh, fastest growing growth rates in the major economy. Installed capacity surged with a remarkable 2.66-fold 2, 2 increase. The share of non-fossil-based electricity generation has grown from 32% to 45 and it's contributing to India's energy uh, prof, uh, portfolio today to up to 20%. India today has 207 gigawatt of non-fossil fuel capacity, which includes 90 gigawatt solar, 47 gigawatt large hydro, 47 from wind, 10 bio power, and 5 gigawatt from so, uh, small hydro. Additionally, 157 gigawatt of capacity is under development and 91 gigawatt is under the tendering phase. In the last one year alone, we have recorded 18.56 gigawatt of renewable energy capacity addition. Our renewable energy sector has attracted $87.5 billion of investment since 2014, including $13.26 billion in FDIs. To achieve our 500 gigawatt target, we require an additional investment of almost uh, $380 billion. The Indian Renewable Energy Agency, IRIDA, has sanctioned loans amounting to 1,90,000 crores and disbursed much more since, and uh, sorry, and disbursed 1.25 uh, lakh crores up to March 2024. Our ongoing schemes and programs are designed to drive our en renewable energy commitment forward. India's renewable energy landscape is evolving rapidly, fueled by, a, fueled by our commitment to sustainability and belief in innovation. We have been inviting global investors to join us in this transformative journey. RE Invest, an international green hydrogen conference concluded recently by Ministry of New and Renewable Energy being the case in point. Together, we can achieve our ambitious target and set new benchmarks for greener and cleaner future. Solar energy has been at the forefront of India's climate action. We have robust schemes like PM Suraghar and PM Kusum driving the energy uh, for the citizens in a very socially equitable manner. To make solar more inclusive, we are implementing the world's largest rooftop program called the PM Suraghar Muft Bijli Yojana, aiming to solarize 10 million households with an investment of 78,000 crores. To share with you, we have so far installed almost 4 lakh uh, uh, rooftops on the households of Indian uh, houses. While we continue to develop solar and onshore wind, we are also exploring avenues such as offshore wind, biofuel, waste to wealth plants, and green hydrogen. Aligned with the motto of Make in India is also Make for the World. We are promoting local manufacturing of renewable energy equipments through in initiatives like the production-linked uh, scheme for high-efficiency solar module and ACC battery. India is committed to becoming a global leader in green hydrogen, a vital element in the clean energy transition. We have launched the National Green Hydrogen Mission with an outlay of 19,744 crores, including 17,490 crores for strategic interventions for green uh, hydrogen transition site to produce green hydrogen and manufacturing electrolyzers. To achieve green growth and meet our targets, we must focus on technology innovation, skilling, and climate finance. With 
ambitious target like the 2030 target and the net zero of 2070, I'm confident that million of, millions of Indian youth will find immense growth opportunity with the right skills. And therefore, we have a Herculean task in front of us to skill our youth. Today, India is the most promising place for investment in green and clean energy. I urge you all to explore the tremendous, uh, tremendous potential of India's renewable energy sector. India has profoundly humanized the net zero narrative by not only committing to ambitious goals, but also championing the interest of the entire global south, recognizing that sustainable development and environmental stewardship go hand in hand. India has framed its net zero ambition in context of inclusivity, affordability, equity, and ensuring that nobody is left behind. Through uh, several initiatives that we are sharing now with Global South, we continue to thrive alongside the richer counterparts to fight against the climate change. Distinguished colleagues, it's both an honor and a privilege to witness India's remarkable ascent in the realm of renewable energy. As we harness the power of sun, we must continue to illuminate our path through a sustainable future, empowering not only India's renewable energy sector, but also solidifying our role as a global climate leader. May the sun always bless us, and may the Vayu and the Varun propel India's journey to the true might that it is. Om Suryai Namaha.